Thank you, Chairman Griffith. Today, we will hear from the government officials leading both the ongoing COVID-19 recovery and the efforts to bolster the nation's public health system for the long term, which is our best defense against future pandemics. And this is no simple task. When President Biden came into office, he inherited a year-old pandemic from the Trump administration, during which public health experts were routinely ignored and maligned, hamstringing the government's ability to respond. Deaths were soaring faster, and those involved in COVID-19 response were frequently forced to correct President Trump's misinformation about the virus, which distracted from the important goals for distributing newly authorized vaccines. It's unfortunate that a national emergency so quickly turned into a partisan issue at a time when we most needed to come together. Now, over the last two years, the Democratic Congress and the Biden administration invested in a nationwide vaccine campaign and COVID test distribution that accelerated our recovery. After facing new challenges from more aggressive COVID-19 variants, death rates and hospitalizations have once again fallen across the nation. However, we must continue to be vigilant and monitor new variants, improve vaccination rates, and ensure that an uptick in cases does not occur. At the same time, we know that COVID-19 is not the last pandemic we'll face, and we need to be sure we're incorporating the lessons learned from the pandemic into our public health infrastructure, and today we'll hear agency plans to do just that. Now, a strong public health response includes effective communication and access to accurate, reliable information. It includes consistent investment in scientific research that leads to development of safe and effective vaccines and treatments. It includes establishing partnerships between the federal, state, and local governments and the private sector to ensure a smooth response when a public health threat arises. We must also address the racial and ethnic disparities that affect our ability to mount an equitable response to a pandemic. These inequalities predated COVID-19, COVID but were magnified during the pandemic, and it's unacceptable in this day and age that the burden of death and disease continues to fall disproportionately on people of color. Unfortunately, later today, we, we're on the floor of the House taking up yet another partisan bill that seeks to roll back uh, COVID protections. This is the third bill from the, GOT, from the GOP that seeks to roll back COVID protections at a time when COVID continues to spiral and variants are a real danger. I will remind my colleagues, there are 500 people still dying every day from COVID. This is still with us. And when I was at rules uh, earlier this week on this third bill, uh, there were some on the right uh, and that does not include members of this committee. I'm not talking about our chairwoman or, or, or Chairman Guthrie or Dr. Burgess, but there were some extremists on the right uh, who continue to rail against vaccines. It's very dangerous. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not you know, saying this is true for most Republicans, but there are certainly some on the right that give the impression that the vaccines are not safe, that they're not effective, and that somehow people shouldn't take them. And I just want to bring that up because it disturbs me greatly. I was very disturbed when I went to rules to hear that over and over again. Um, and I think that, again, I'll remind uh, my colleagues that the bill we're taking up today that says that global travelers, foreign, foreigners that come to the United States don't need vaccine. Well, that decision, the decisions about the public health emergency, about vaccine mandates, those should be made by the people in front of us at this table. Th those decisions should be made by the public health experts who have the science and not by Congress. We don't have the expertise, in my opinion, to make those decisions, which is why I continue to oppose these rollbacks of uh, our efforts to deal with the COVID crisis. And when Republicans put politics over science, it seriously undermines our ability to combat this, combat this pandemic and the hard work that these public agencies do every day. So I hope that we can get back to the business of regular order, of the committee taking on the nation's challenges. None of those three bills came through this committee. None of them had regular order. Uh, but we have a lot to do this year, and we have to reauthorize the pandemic and the All Hazards Preparedness Act, which is set to expire in September. PAPA has been a bipartisan effort in the past, and I hope that we can be guided by that precedent so that we can make sure that our nation is in the strongest position to address a future crisis. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.